In September, the New York Times published a story showing that President Donald Trump only paid $750 in federal income taxes in 2016 and 2017, respectively. This shocking total led many people to ask, so is Donald Trump actually rich? The answer is most definitely yes, he is still a billionaire. Donald Trump does owe a tremendous amount of money if you add it all up. It's about $1.1 billion, which is a ton of money to owe, even if you're really rich. But he also has an enormous amount of assets. Calculating net worth is actually a pretty simple equation. You subtract a person's debt from their assets. If you tally all of those up, they get to $3.66 billion. So it's just subtraction from there. 3.66 minus 1.1, his net worth right now is $2.5 billion. The real trouble is how to value the different assets a person has. There are different ways of valuing, say, real estate versus the value of shares in the company someone holds. In Trump's case, much of his value is held in the property that he owns, and a key way of finding out the value of commercial real estate is to look at net operating income, or how profitable the real estate is. So, for example, if you look at 40 Wall Street, which is Trump's skyscraper down in the financial district in New York, so the net operating income of that building is about $18.1 million. So you take that $18.1 million, and then what we do to figure out the value is we call up a bunch of people who buy and sell real estate in New York City all day long, all year long. So for this particular example, you know, we called up eight different people, and we asked those people, now what's the multiple that you might expect for a building like this on that profitability to then determine what the value is. And they come up with you know slightly different numbers so you get a range. They were suggesting that the net operating income should be about 5.4% of the total value of the building. Now, if you do the math on that with $18.1 million, and that suggests that the value of the building should be about $366 million. But that's not the only way of looking at a building's value. You can also look at the cost per square foot. Let's look at Dan's example of 40 Wall Street. That building is about 1.165 million square feet. Going around to experts again, the average response of how much a building like that would be worth was around $400 per square foot. This puts 40 Wall Street at a value of $466 million, a different number than when we calculated the cost using net operating income. And here's where it gets to be a little bit of an art in addition to the science and the math of it. And you have to figure out, all right, well, how are we gonna blend those things together? And in this case, one of those methodologies isn't clearly right or wrong. They just come to slightly different numbers. And so what we chose to do here is to just average them. And so that means that the estimated value of that building is $401 million. If you march through Trump's portfolio and you look at all of his buildings, his golf courses, you can add all of that up and then you get the total value of his, all of his assets. If you go through everything, that total value adds up to about $3.66 billion. So Trump really is wealthy. But how do you get away with paying only $750 in income taxes? The answer lies in the difference between net operating income and taxable income, or how much income an individual declares is taxable after a number of deductions. For example, it calculates how much interest you're paying on that property, and so you would subtract that from the net operating income. So if you have a lot of debt against the property, then all of a sudden your net operating income shrinks a lot. If you have invested a bunch of money into a particular property, then that would then shrink what your uh, income would be from that net operating income getting closer down to the taxable income. There are also more aggressive accounting tricks one can play to decrease what they owe. For instance, it looks like Ivanka Trump was both serving as an employee of the Trump Organization while also collecting consulting fees from the Trump Organization. And that would allow then Donald Trump to write off those consulting fees and therefore make his taxable income look even smaller. So every business person is going to take a net operating income and shrink it down for their taxable income. What was so astonishing about this report is just the, the level uh, that it happened and the fact that it, these are enormous operating profits across Trump's portfolio. And they're real profits. We can see it 
It's documented in SEC documents. I mean, 1290 Avenue in the Americas, Trump owns a 30% stake in that. That 30% stake alone is generating more than $20 million of net operating income per year. Same with 555 California Street in San Francisco. 40 Wall Street in downtown New York, $18.1 million of net operating income per year. Trump Tower in New York City, more than $13 million of net operating income per year. So that's real, real money. And yes, he's got a lot of debt, much of which is, is coming due, but he does have a way out here. But it's gonna require some moves that would be typical for a normal businessman, but present serious conflicts of interest for the President of the United States. One option is that he goes onto Wall Street and asks banks that his administration is regulating and investigating for hundreds of millions of dollars. Another option is that he sells off very valuable assets and then welcomes anybody who wants to put hundreds of millions of dollars into his personal portfolio. Neither of those things, again, would be unusual for a standard businessman, but that nothing about doing business with the President of the United States is standard. And so then you run into large questions about conflicts of interest.